Thanks for coming, everyone. Today, we're talking about uh, the Datgel photo tool and how it can help you streamline core and test pit photo or trial pit photo, if you must, uh, reporting. So briefly, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Phil Wade. I'm the founder and managing director of Datgel. Uh, I am a geotechnical engineer. I've been using Gint uh, for over 20 years. Uh, and for most of my career, I have been involved in this type of work, geotechnical data management, software development, and so on. So today, uh, it's a short webinar, approximately 20 minutes, uh, maybe slightly longer. Uh, I will briefly introduce Gint and Datgel software, and uh, then we'll get into the details of the uh, photo tool. Uh, I'll do a real live demo of the software, and I'll explain how you can uh, obtain a trial and what your next step is after this. Um, now, you might notice there's a Q and question and answer button interface in uh, Zoom. That would be the right place for you to um, ask your questions. You can type them as we're going, if you wish, but I will answer them all at the end. So the Gint and Datchel uh, solution. It is a, uh, it's a combination of the two products or so software. It allows you together, it allows you to manage and report all types of geotechnical data. Um, and uh, it eliminates the need to type data twice and eliminates the need to have hundreds or thousands of spreadsheets kicking around. Uh, and it has very high quality reporting options. So Gint is uh, provided by Bentley Systems. Um, so Datchel is a reseller of Gint. Uh, it brings the core functionality for, for data management for CAD, uh, it integrates with other Bentley system software, like their civil design products, and it to and to Plaxus and uh, it's a soil vision. Um, it has an option of an access or an SQL server backend. Datgel, we are your uh, your partner to uh, use Gint to its most potential, greatest potential. Uh, we'll provide technical support, training, provide licenses. Uh, and we develop third-party add-ins to Gint to help you get the most out of the software. Um, so that's the sort of, we create the more specialized last mile type things like our add-ins for the CPT tool or the photo tool, as an example of that as well. We have 800 or more licenses of Datgel software out there in the world in 230 companies, organizations in 33 countries. Uh, and we have, um, our, our, our people are in Australia, Singapore, and Spain at this time. So the solution, Gint is the core. The DGD tool sits around that. Um, and then we have a list of more geotechnical tools. The photo tool is classed as one of those. Um, we'll be, we're running webinars about all of our add-ins over the next few months. So, to the photo tool in detail. So the photo tool's goal is to help you efficiently present photographs from your field work or, or lab testing. Um, I think many people who are not using a photo tool probably are using a um, Excel file or a PowerPoint or a Word file to present that. You know, They'll import it or insert these photos. They'll resize them manually, make it look right. They might edit them inside Word or Excel, perhaps. Um, they have to type everything again. You got to type the borehole name. You got to, you know, so on. And probably before that, anyway, they already named. They would have named the file something more logical from the beginning, anyway. So there's a lot of manual work involved if you're doing it the uh, slow way of presenting these types of photos. Um, so what the, how the photo tool works is it, your, your first step is to name files in the file system. Here's an, you can see the, like a file folder here. That's the, where the files would be stored. Uh, 
Then you've got to name it with this certain naming convention here, like this, that's an example. So you put all your files for a given project for every borehole in one folder with this naming convention for core, say for core photos in this example. Then you go to Gintz, you run this add-in. This is the, what the form pops up. You select the options, click OK, and then it reads the files and writes the data to the database that those core boxes exist. So we're not importing the images into the Gint database. We are essentially creating the data, the information in that step, that we can then calculate a path that when you print the report, we, we've got to, we can calculate the path and we link the photos to the page. Now, when we present the photos, the widths are standardized. So to fit the size of the report, like all the height, we constrain how big or the, the maximum horizontal, maximum vertical of, of the image. So it all looks neat and tidy. We don't, we don't skew the image, it maintains the aspect ratio. And you can add, you can type a text description into the database, into the GIMP table, and that can, present, can display below the photo on the reports. So there are a number of image types we support. And actually this is expandable. This is just the ones we came across so far. So you can add them to the list. You can design more reports to support them. Uh, and talk about the reporting. So then we have a, a quite a wide range of reporting reports already developed. Some of which are the log reports are really examples that you can then adapt and copy paste into your, your custom log report. Um, where the graphic table ones, you could just add your logo and use them as they are. Uh, so all of the examples on this page on the right are actually the graphic table reports. So with the log reports, you, it, it, they work by adding additional pages on the back of your, the back of your report. You can deal with the half page, like having photos of the bottom half of the page. Uh, it can deal with the strip logs, which I'll go back here. That's what this is example of. You can show images as a strip down the page. So you can have many little strips of core boxes that you've chopped up and you just got to tell it, you know, name the files correctly and it will get linked into the right place and it will constrain them to fit in the top, within the range that you tell it to fit. Um, and there are many, like how many, how many box, how many photos per page do you want? One, two, four, depends on the, and orientations as well. That you can basically design more if you need to, but I think we've created most of the examples you need. Um, now in the, in the last few years, uh, I wasn't really as really, it was a couple of years ago, we, we developed version 3.1 where we had this major new functionality um, where you have more Flexi more customization of options, more flexibility to configure how your data is. One of the big ones we are asked about is people didn't want to use the underscore to define the end of the point ID name in the file name because underscore is sometimes actually part of the point ID name. So we, um, well, we now have an option. There's a list of available um, characters that you can use to signify the flag of the point ID end. And the other one was people who have deep, very deep boreholes, as in, you know, more than a hundred meters, maybe that's not super deep, but some people have more than a thousand meters. Um, it wasn't so easy to, you know, you'd have to redesign the report basically to make it, make it flexible. So now we've got it so that you can control the, the number of digits either side of the decimal place in this field here, this text field. So that when you, when the, when the add-in runs or when the reports run actually, it will read this and then look for those file names with those number of digits. Uh, and there's, now we've added letter page sizes for the, uh, the North America markets. And uh, there's uh, the way the logo links is using our standardized logo linking option on the, from, the, from the office field on the, on the project table. All right, let's open up the software. Here it is. Um, so go back to input. I've already opened the, the, the project in the library. Uh, I'm running the very latest version we haven't released yet, 
they will be out in a couple of weeks when we fix a few things. Um, okay, so we have the, some example boreholes, right? So you wouldn't, you would never really use this exact database in practice. You would merge the image table and the options, these, these two tables here, the description. This controls how the descriptions appear and the options table. You'd merge these into your project. And also the reports would be merged into your custom library as well. So, um, so we'll skip over point, we'll go to image. This is the practical place where you need to work. Um, all right, I have to remind myself of the, the, this is, okay, this is where the, fo the photos are. This is where the project is that we've got open. So you can see we've created these folders with the same name as the project, the project here, with the added words at the end to define what, what it is. So we've got the core, core photo is the core box, core boxes. Um, I'll sort this and look at the data. So I'm going to delete uh, BH, delete BH1's core box photo. Save just, and then we're going to re-merge that data or re-import it. I'm calling the photo tool to browse to that folder, but it does default to the right path, you know, the parent path. Uh, we don't need that. The image, um, the image um, flag is end of point .e flag is the underscore, uh, and it's already got this as default. So it's good. Click OK. Now, it's tried to import all the data that exists already, right? So um, it only managed to import two, which is what I expected. Exit this, and it, it did refresh this time. Sometimes you have to click F5 to make the the grid refresh. It sort of depends. So that is the data we just imported. So it does read the content, the image um, properties out of the file. Sometimes you might wish to delete that. Uh, and you could have a description here, but for a core box, I don't think that makes a lot of sense to have descriptions. Let's go to uh, one of the test pits. We won't, it's just the same process. You won't actually import it again, but you see we have the test pit type uh, and um, I, I added a description here. So it's test bit two. You'll see that in a minute. So we've done, that's it. I mean, we named the files. Of course, that was the, would have been the, the greatest amount of manual work is renaming the files to the logical name, uh, getting the folder name correct. These are the tricks that you need to, um, you know, get right. Um, and uh, all right, now we're going to go to output. And um, we're on logs, so we'll just do the logs first. We'll do this uh, test bit, test bit two. Preview that. So we got the first log. Okay, so the, the concept would be, you'd never print this report, of course, as it is. This would be copied into your um, copied into your uh, like custom log. So that would have your descriptions up there. And you see down here, we have the, the little description that I wrote. Although this doesn't quite match anyway, it's all made up data. Probably looks, doesn't look like it'd be slick and slides in that uh, photo. Um, probably more, more chance to be in this one. Second photo. Okay, that's one option. Now I do recall, I didn't really test this next one I'm about to show you. So we'll find out how it goes. Just a minute. I'll just have a look to see what the data is. Okay, BH2 has some, let's try BH2. Okay, so this one, has the um, the vertical strip. So the vertical strips, see that's one photo that basically is a core box where I trimmed it, you know, cut it up and rotated it in an editor. So you're gonna remember the photo tool does not edit the photos in any way. We present the photos that are sitting in the file system. And this is a sketch someone did, scanned it and uh, you know, it's on the page. So I go to page two. 
And the core photos, I think, should be sitting at the back of this. There we are. So, so it is possible to present, or you don't have to use the graphic tables, right? You can use the um, just log reports if you want to, but there are some, some limits on that. Okay, then the graphic table reports are reports where you only are only presenting um, photographs. So we've got um, core examples here. So I'll choose the four per page core. So of course this one you could produce the photos as a separate report from the log. So they might go on a different appendix if you work that way. Um, and you can also use the Datchel output tool to print the photos, the, the non-cored log, then the cord log, then the core photo report, like these three separate reports for the one borehole uh, in the right order collated by, by borehole. So you see we've got the page numbers down here correctly. Uh, we'll do the tests. So there's a bunch of different options here for different core photos. You've got test bit photos. And we have some for sample photos and vibrant core photos as well. There we go. That just two for that one. Right. Well, that's probably enough to show you for the, um, for the demo. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. So your next step um, is, would be to, uh, well, if you don't have Gint, uh, you can email me and uh, I will send you the installer for Gint. You can download the trial of the photo tool from our, from, uh, our trial page on datgel.com. The, um, the documentation for the photo tool can be accessed uh, through this, um, this link here, this URL. Just one more step down gets you to the photo tool. If you have any tech support questions, you can get us on this, uh, this email, support at datgel.com. Uh, we are running some training courses for Gint and Datgel software over the next uh, month or so. So they're listed on our website. You can sign up. And we are running a series of webinars this quarter. Here's the, the plan is uh, listed here. Um, and you can keep up to date with that on our news uh, page on datgel.com. Also, I'll list them all on our LinkedIn uh, group. I'll make posts for each of our webinars on that. So we have some questions. Some people have been asking as we've been going. So first question, um, how much processing is demanded for the raw photos in the folder? Uh, I guess you mean like in the sense of um, processing. Uh, okay, well, there's probably a few ways of uh, interpreting this question. One might be like, do you need to edit the images in an image editor before you present them? Uh, sometimes you do. Sometimes you may like to rotate the core box so it looks straight. Uh, you may want to trim them. Like I trimmed those photos you saw there, but that it's not necessary to trim them if you don't want to. That depends on what you want to do. Um, it's uh, maybe you have the, you know, the photo board with the title and the color stuff on the top there. You'd rather keep it. Um, so there's, yes, I think you may wish to pre-process it, but that's basically, you know, the photo tool is not editing the photos at all, right? It's up to you to decide how you want the images to look. Um, maybe another way of interpreting the question might be about like the CPU of the, um, of, you know, the processing time of the computer. Uh, look, it does, it can be a bit intensive, um, and it can actually, it's even possible to run out of Ram printing these photos out of Gint, the way Gint works. Sometimes you have to not do if, if you've got, you know, 500 photos or something, you probably can't print them all at once. Um, however, the Datgel output tool has a, has a way of batching them, right? It's like printing them many times separately. Right? Um, so you could use the output tool to overcome that problem as well. 
Um, next, okay, actually the next question I pretty much answered. The next question was how do we need to cut the photos into the right size and put them in the right orientation? Yeah, well, you need to do that using a photo editor. Uh, and the question is, can we use this add-in as independent software from Gint? Uh, no, no, it is an add-in to Gint. As you can see, the it's using Gint reports. It's really quite integrated into Gint and we have no current plans to separate them. Because I think the greatest benefit, back, back to our point at the beginning here, is um, having everything in one database, right? Everything in one system makes it more efficient. Having 10 different systems to do 10 different parts of your site investigation reporting, I think is uh, quite inefficient. So yeah, we have no intention of breaking this out into a separate thing. Okay, well, we don't, that's a good question. Okay, this question is once we, um, the photos are linked to the GPJ, I assume the folder GPJ paths can't be changed. Not exactly. It's relative to the project folder. All right, so we look back into our demo folder, right? The way the, the paths are calculated is it's calculated based on the, the current path, the current path of the GPJ database, the GIMP project database. So you need to, you can move them around, just move them together. Um, now that's the default way of working. However, there is, I didn't talk about it earlier, but there is another way of doing this of defining the paths is to use the um, parent initial image folder. So instead of using the, that default of the, the folder where the project file is stored, in this case, C demo, you could choose a different folder path that might fit into the way your company, you know, stores its files in your file system, right? For each project. So you could set that differently, override it. Uh, and actually, if you're using SQL Server, you must set the parent initial image file folder because there is no GPJ file for us to get a folder path from. And every project, of course, would be a different location in your SQL Server database. Do you know of any uh, file naming software out there that could speed up? Oh, yes. That's a good question as well. Great question. Yes, there is this um, product called um, Bulk Rename. It just popped up on my other screen. So you can um, select the files you want to rename, replace like hash with something like that, right? And you can see that it would search the files with that and you, know, you get the idea, right? This is a very powerful tool. You've got all these options we won't get into here. So yeah, I use that a bit. All right, I guess we'll uh, wrap it up there. Hasn't been any new questions for a couple of minutes. So um, look, I appreciate everyone's attendance today. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions or you, you know, want to purchase a license or something, you feel free to contact, uh, contact us at that gel. Um, back at the, that's my details there. Um, and I hope you will attend some of our future webinars. Have a great day.